a mind of a warrior everybody repeat after me mind of a warrior so many times we believers miss that and because of that we we create more problem in our problem do you know if there is a 5% problem in our life because of the wrong kind of a mind we carry we can make that 5% problem a 50% problem we can exaggerate what is happening around us if we are not healthy within so this evening i want to give you seven points seven points oh i wish you can write it engrave it on your heart and type it or do whatever it takes i i know that these seven points will become a blessing into your life do you believe that can i hear a louder amen if you believe that the coming seven points are just going to give you a take off into your life it's going to happen and uh, and the lord took me to the story of it's a, it's a, it's a story i don't think anybody has ever heard in south africa i don't think you have ever heard this story the story is about david and goliath <laughs> so the lord took me to this this amazing story of david and goliath and and he started ministering to me and i want to share what the lord has shared with me and i tell you prophetically these points will beautify your life it will elevate you in every area of your life every area of your life so you know the story right you know the story there was a time when when two armies palestine's army and israelites the army of israel they were facing one another and you know the story that they were on mountains everybody say they were on mountains so the bible says on one mountain was the palestinian army and on the another mountain was israel's army and you know the story that somehow they came to a conclusion that we are not going to fight with one another we'll send a guy you send one person let them fight whoever wins their army will win you know the story right so they they chose goliath to represent them now listen to me i pray that the holy spirit will speak to us through this old old story but in a new way can i hear an amen listen some battles are not won corporately some battles are not won when the whole army fights together it is individual some battles that you are facing this evening is not supposed to be fought with your whole family with all your relatives and friends it is your battle listen to me carefully it is your battle some battles are not corporate some battles are personal yes israel had an army but it that battle was not about the army it was about one man it was about one man am i speaking to that one man this evening and am i speaking in the spirit to you that the battle you are facing it is your battle personally you win it your family will win it you win it your neighborhood will win it you win it your generations will win it if you win it your spouse will win it help me preach so so they they said goliath you go from our side so then then comes this giant now listen he came down from the mountain repeat after me he came down from the mountain because the bible clearly says that between two mountains there was a valley there was a valley there was a valley there was a valley and this giant came down from the mountain to the valley to the valley now here is my point number 1 you know the story and let me take a little quiz how many days non stop goliath was coming to the valley and asking israelites to send somebody to fight him how many days how many days 40 days imagine the intensity of the insult towards the towards the army of god that a giant is coming day and night and he say anybody and then there is a sunset and he goes back next morning he comes back again says anybody nobody comes let me tell you why nobody was coming for 40 days listen to me because they were round table christians 
but christianity is not a round table conference it is a kingdom of power and might your christian walk is not the walk of just round table conferences and having a cup of coffee and thinking what happened wrong who blame it is and what went wrong no christianity is about going on your knees and asking god to fight for you and to see the victory coming so they were only talking who will go who will go who will go nobody will go and here is my point number 1 in first samuel chapter 17 verse 4 onwards it says like this and there came out from the camp of philistines a champion named goliath of gath whose height was 6 cubits and a span he had a helmet of bronze on his head and he was armed with a coat of mail and the weight of the coat was 5000 shekels of bronze and he had bronze armor on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders the shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and his shield bearer went before him that's the reason everybody was scared because the bible clearly talks about the size of the giant there is my point number 1 to have a sound mind any time you measure your problem you will be disturbed any time you measure how big your problem is and sometimes we and our discussion makes it even bigger Sometimes the person we go to the counseling for exaggerates your problem. When in a small problem you call your auntie, this time not in Johannesburg, say in Cape Town. You call her telling her this problem and she says, "Really? Oh my god, yeah." So all of us said in the moment she said, "Yeah." It was like a balloon that got bigger. that problem started to look bigger the very reason they were scared because they knew the size of goliath whenever you exaggerate your problem your mind is affected but you know you know the story and you know what happened in the end a little boy david came he killed him why because david knew the size of his god A sound mind will always know who his God is and what his God is able of. But pastor, you don't know. It's such an important exam. Oh, my daughter is studying day and night, and she's studying and studying and not eating and studying and studying so much so that she's not even coming to the church because she's studying. She's not coming to the church studying. It's fine, but. it doesn't make sense because coming to the church will only bless your daughter how can coming to the church become a time waste it tells it tells that your revelation of the examination is bigger than the revelation you have of your god come on somebody but but pastor you don't know my boss i don't have to know your boss i know the boss of every boss and he's sitting right there on throne so many times we exaggerate we have a song of our problems in our giants the size that's why 40 days nobody went and fought him day and night they were only talking My point number 1 is to have a sound mind know who your god is Don't just know about your god know your god It's a different thing to know about Jesus but to know Jesus personally Even the one who doesn't believe in Jesus knows about Jesus yes or no They know that Jesus is the is the god of christians everybody the whole world knows about jesus but praise god i know there is a generation sitting here who know him personally yes and that is where the sound mind births 
remember remember my precious people it is the sound mind it is the healthy mind it is the strong mind that is your biggest weapon in your battle if one little goliath one little david can kill goliath why not david's brothers they all had the same god they all had they were all israelites they were all the people of the god they were they were all from the same tribe but why only one boy because they were so much troubled inside now i am sure you getting the answer of your question why you always troubled because you're always focused on the size of your giant you're always focused on how big the problem is Let's go to point number 2. You remember I asked you to repeat that he left the mountain and came to the valleys, right? So now the scenario is that Goliath is in the valley on his back is his army and on the front mountain on top there is the army of Israel. And now he's looking up and he's saying send send somebody send somebody send somebody in verse number 8 it says like this he stood and shouted to the ranks of israel why have you come out to draw up for battle am i not a philistine and are you not servants of saul choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me are you ready for point number 2 When God has placed you on the mountain don't listen to the valley's voice When God has established you on a higher place don't listen to the voices coming from the valley in your life and that is your mistake that is your mistake we don't understand where we are placed in God and we lower down our standards and listen to the voices of the enemy The problem was they were looking down at the valley and expecting valley to 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 show them some sign my dear friends the book of colossians says that we are seated with christ in the heavenly realms we already seated we already seated with him a lot of people think that i will go to heaven and then i will sit with jesus no that's not the new testament in the spirit realms we are seated with christ in the heavenly places already right now right now we are sitting in the heavenly places so if we are sitting in the heavenly places why the earthly places are affecting us that much and that is somewhere the body of Christ just misses the mark that they forget that we are on the mountain do i have some people who will say i am on the mountain of the lord i am in the presence of the lord i am with god on top god has put me on high i will not listen to the voices coming from down oh you are good for nothing that's a voice from the valley oh you are going to fail it's a voice from the valley can i give you a solid statement You know I've heard people saying oh it's too late for me to get married now it's too late for me to succeed in life now it's too late for me to study now it's too late to do anything good now let me give you a new line it's too late to fail now it's too late enemy has tried his best against us it's too late we are not going to fail it's the voice of the valley we are already on the mountain top we know our position we know our companion we know our strength and it doesn't matter what the valley is saying tonight i know that my god says you are on the mountain i am with you is going to be all right i am telling you that your day is coming don't listen to the voices of the valley but pastor my cousin sister disconnect her call if she tells you you're going to fail if she is telling you your son will never come out of drugs because her son didn't come out of drugs cut the call church stop listening to valleys you are on the mountain top don't lower your standards 
oh that pastor from india doesn't even know english how he'll preach yes i don't know english i'll preach in hindi but i will preach till my last breath i'm not going to listen to anybody why do we easily come into the uh, contact with the valley voices and then we start relating ourselves and say yeah 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 you are right we can't fight you you are too big is there anybody oh no nobody oh can we send two oh can okay, no, can we send three all right let's me let's make a plan south africa is the champions in making plans stop making plans start speaking back to the valley and say i know my redeemer lives I know my Jesus lives. I know it is tough. I know I don't have a remedy as of now. I know, I know I'm little stuck, but I am coming out in Jesus name. Don't listen to the voices of valley. If you want to have a sound mind, don't listen to the voices of the valley when God has placed you on the mountain top. Hallelujah and verse number 11 it says when Saul and all Israel heard these words of Philistine they were dismayed and greatly afraid Saul the king was afraid what kind of a king you are if you are afraid let me ask you humbly as a man of God and by the way there is a difference between man of God and man sent by God let me speak to you as a man of God sent by God that if you are a Christian if the spirit of God is in you if Jesus lives inside you how can you be afraid Amen. and and Saul was afraid and verse number 26 says and David said to men stood by him. So between verse number 11 and 26, now this lighty comes with bread and cheese. Because in the morning his father said, take some bread and cheese for your brothers and check if they're okay. And if they're okay, please bring a token of love so that I can see. And then just, just remember my sons because they're in the battlefield. So this lighty gave his sheep to his one of the friends say, bro, no, sorry, bro, take care of the sheep. All right, I go. So he's coming. La 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 And then he stops and he sees both the armies lined up but the fight is not going on and there is one giant in the middle and then he and, he, and the Bible clearly says he, he left the bread and the cheese with somebody. You keep it. It's not time for me to eat and be merry. It's time for me to get into the business. He went to somebody and said, what's happening? They told him, this guy is coming 40 days, man, and we are not able to defeat him. And then when, 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 he, when he heard, when he heard speaking the same words again, now David is listening to the words of Goliath again. And the Bible says in verse number 26, and when David said to the men who stood by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this guy? And takes away the reproach from Israel. What will happen? If I do it, what, what, what I'm going to give? Because he was listening to people telling, King Saul will give his daughter to the one who will kill Goliath. So this little guy got excited. So he confirmed. He said, what? What? What's going to get? Oh, he's going to get a house. Go back home and read it. It says, Saul will give them a house. That family will live tax-free for whole life. And Saul will marry her daughter to that guy. Now I know why David killed Goliath. <laughs> Praise God, brother. Even if you are coming to church for some anointed reasons, at least I pray that you will get the Holy Spirit and get baptized and get Jesus into your life. So now he's saying what, what that person will get. And then he said, and then he said, for who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now, the same statement, Saul is listening and he's afraid. Same statement, David heard and he said, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? From tomorrow, don't tell. Don't discuss how big the problem is. Look into the eyes of problem and say, who are you? The Jesus who is inside defeated the death. It will, he will defeat you as well. Yes. Who are you? Who are you? He's the same tall guy. But for David, he's like, who is he? Who is he? I tell you by faith, what is your problem in front of God? You are making your problem bigger than God in your mind. The God I serve is the God of miracles. The God of miracles. Who are you? 
Don't listen to the voices of valley when God has placed you on the mountain. Are you ready for the third point? Third point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in verse number 28, when David declares, oh, there, there's something is happening and I, I can be the one. I can be the one. In verse number 28, it's, it, something happened. Now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard. Whose elder brother? David's elder brother. The firstborn of Jesse. Heard. When he spoke to the man and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said to David, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? In other words, he's reminding David, you just get lost from here. You are not worthy to fight. Your job is to take care of the sheep. And then he says, I know your presumptions and the evil of your heart for you have come down to see the battle. You are just here to tease us. You are just here to have fun. You lighty, I know you. You're going to make fun. What? You'll click pictures and then post on Facebook. Look at my, look at my scary brothers. Look at this King Saul. Hey, the, look at these shivering people. You are here to make fun. Let me tell you church. Let me tell you if you really want to grow in life and, and, to, and to be elevated and to reach your destiny and to love Jesus more. You have to program one thing in, into your life and that is don't allow people to force their failures on you because they could not do it they'll tell you you can't do it you're not listening to me because they failed in the same thing they will tell you oh it's very difficult and the guy preaching to you knows what he's preaching I was only 18 when I got saved, 21 when I became a full-time pastor with no beard. And then some grown-up guys in the city came and, he, and they put their hands on my shoulder and said, It's not easy, bro. It's not easy. All the best. Look at us. We left it. It's not easy. You still have time. You have future. You can do a lot. You are a graduate. You have good work experience. Why are you leaving all this? It's not easy. What will you eat? What will you eat? The one who teaches chemistry eats through chemistry. The one who teaches maths is paid by maths. So you are telling me I'm teaching the book of life and this cannot feed me. It was their experience. It was their failure. And they were telling me it's not possible. You are just wasting your time. If you want to grow in life, stop taking advices from people who failed don't go for counseling for marriage to somebody who kicked his own wife out of the house two years back don't discuss your finances with the one who's only begging in all of Durban can I hear a few amens now don't let people push and force their failures on you. Mm -mm. It's not going to happen here. He said, you, you, you are here to waste time. And I know your intentions. I wish he knew his intentions. He would have exalted him. That is one key in life that you have to learn. That you cannot allow others to push their failures on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the point number four. Point number four. Can I tell you, church, the point number four is my favorite out of all. This is the most closest to my heart. Now, David just ran away from his brother. Somebody say, Amen. Learn this from David. When people tell you you can't do it, I give you permission, run away. But if it's your spouse, don't run away. <laughs> Stay there and change the spouse. Change the spouse internally, not I'm saying change the spouse. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now when David just ran away and he said, you know, I, please, give me, please give me 12 minutes, right? I'll be back. I just feel literally David would have said this to his brother. Bro, give me a few minutes. Stay here. See what the Lord will do. And he went to another group and said, are you guys sure that, that the king has said those three things? He said, yeah, it's, it's done, man. She's waiting. Okay, so, so he said, I will go. I will go. So they took him to Saul and said, he's going to fight Goliath. I love, I love this next part. In verse number 33, 34 and 35. 33 says, and Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight. You are not able. With him, for you are but a youth. You are but a youth. And he has been a man of war from his youth. So what is exactly, what exactly Saul is trying to tell David? He's trying to tell David, you are not experienced, right? Right? Are you, are you ready for the, for the fourth point? Goliath was experienced, but David was anointed. He was anointed. Your experience, yo, I wish I had time to tell you, but I can tell you on a cup of coffee that how many experienced people, people came to me and said, this is not going to work. And it worked. So many times our experience is louder than our surrender to God. Every time we are too much dependent on our experience, my dear friends, be ready for the shaking. Anytime you make your experience your God, God is jealous. God is jealous. He'll say, all right, I'll break your experience in a way that you will come back to me. Are you listening to me? So Goliath was experienced, but David was anointed. You are not experienced to face your giants, but can I tell you, you are anointed to defeat your Goliaths. You are anointed to just hit at the right place to bring it down. So don't depend on your experience. Depend on his voice. Can I give you something more on this point? Experience can give you stories. But anointing will give you testimonies. Amen. Have you sat with somebody with a lot of experience? And they'll tell you stories. But sit with somebody anointed. He will give you testimonies. May you be a person of testimonies in Jesus name. If you believe it, lift your hand and say Amen. I said may you not only be a person of story but of testimonies in Jesus name. Because that's exactly what is written next. But David said to Paul, Saul, sorry. David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there was a lion and a bear and, and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him. It's not a story, church. It's a testimony. He said, you're talking about Goliath's experience. Let me tell you about my anointing. I, I have the anointing to run after the lion, catch the lion, and then open his mouth and bring the lamb out of it and then just, just kill that lion and the bear. That's my testimony. May your testimonies become the platform for future miracles. So next time when you fall into a problem, don't think how it's going to happen. Remember how it happened yesterday. Many a times we think that Jesus fed 5,000, right? With five loaves. But by the way, if you read two more chapters, same scenario came again. And there were 4,000 and disciples came to him again and said, now today as well, we don't have enough. How it's going to happen? Jesus' reply was, it will happen the way it happened yesterday. The way I did it that time, I'm going to do it today. When you fall into the struggles of your life, remember one day you prayed and your flu was gone. One day you prayed and your bill was paid. One day you prayed and, and something happened and, and, and in divine and supernatural way, your child got an admission. You must remind yourself of the past testimonies. If, now listen to me, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm hitting some points here, right? If you all the time remember your past experiences, you will become proud. 
But if you will remind yourself past testimonies, your faith will rise up. Experience is about a man. Testimony is about a God. Oh, now I feel like preaching. Experience is of a man. Testimony is of God. Goliath was about a man. David was about a God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Point number four is Goliath was experienced, but David was anointed. You are anointed. Tell your mind you are anointed. Anointed. I am anointed to come out of anything. But pastor, what about my debts? Anything. What about my broken marriage? Anything, my brother. Anything. But how? The anointing will help you. Experience will not. Anointing will make the way. Anointing will change things. Anointing will shift the things. Oh, I wish you are listening to me right now. I feel the fire in my bones right now. Experience will not help. But the anointing you carry will shift things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Goliath was experienced. David was anointed. Mm. Yes. I know I don't have a lot of experience. I'm a, I'm a young man of God. I know that I've made many mistakes, but I also know that I have the anointing which can take me to my destiny. Have this confidence in your spirit and in your soul. Are you ready for the fifth point? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, after listening to the testimony of David, Saul agreed, Saul said, all right. It looks like you have killed a lion and a bear. You can kill this giant as well. So they all right, prepare David, prepare David. In verse number 38, it says, Then Saul clothed David with his armor. Whose armor? Saul's armor. Saul's armor. Now I want to show you something. I want to show you. I wish you will understand. I pray that you will understand. Now I, I, want, I want Tyrant to come and stand there. Because that is the only Saul I can think of right now. Now I want, um, who can be that person? My God, who can be that person? That little boy, can he come, Kogi? Will he come? Come. Now here comes our David. Come on, cheer up for David now. All right. Now. So David said, I'm going to go. And then Saul said, all right, take my armor. Take my armor. My God, I feel such the... F oh, clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze. My God, if I wish we, were, we had scooters and bikes in South Africa. We could have arranged a helmet. But imagine a big helmet. Anybody with a cap or something, big cap, nothing. No problem. On his head. All right. A big helmet. A big helmet. On his head. And uh, clothed him with a coat of mail and David strapped with sword over his armor. I wish we had a sword. I we, okay, a big sword. Sorry, Pastor Mac. <laughs> a big sword. Hold it. Yes. And he tried, my God, in vain to go for he had not tested them. Can you fight? Lift the sword. Can you fight? Okay. You're doing better. Man, look at this poor boy. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these. I can't. I can't even walk. I'll kill Goliath or I'll take care of me. 
I'll fall on my face because these clothes and armor and sword is too heavy. So David put them off. David put them off. David said, "Ah, uh-uh. ah, these are yours, not mine." David said, "They are not made for me. They are made for you. I'm not made for it. These are not mine. There's something wrong. Saul, you be Saul. Me, I be David." I won't go like Saul, I'll go like David. You're not listening to me. If you want to grow in life, be original. Amen. The mom I wish I can pray like that sister. No. Don't pray like that sister. Pray the way you want to pray. Oh, I wish I could preach like that brother. No. Preach the way you want to preach. Oh I wish my marriage was like their marriage no make your marriage an example why do we copy david said Saul keep it with you i'll go the way i am i know my god is with me and i don't have to take your stuff i am happy and okay with the david i am and that's where so many people are so much distressed and worried they want to copy the gift they want to copy the style but where will you copy the fruit you can copy somebody's style you can copy somebody's actions you can copy somebody's stuff you can take decisions like them you can talk like them but where will you copy the fruit fruit comes with originality you know so many years i thought oh i wish i could be like benny hin white suit and i'll just say touch and people will fall wow it's going to be amazing god man i started saying touch many many years back nothing happened <laughs> then one day god said why do you pray to become like benny when i've made you sunny <laughs> why do you have to be like david or solomon or this and that be you body of christ is troubled because we want his fruit to be my fruit that is his life with god this is my life with god you take what god has for you i take what i have in god i am okay with what i am that makes me a man of sound mind no comparison no competition no nothing he said i won't i'll go the way god has made me go god bless you thank you so point number 5 be original yeah man i wish i i my house was like their house don't covet their house because you don't know what's happening inside Mm-mm. oh i wish uh, i wish i had life like them you don't know it looks very good from the outside but maybe they are broken and you have less than them but maybe you are most joyful on the face of this earth don't have to copy don't have to say god i wish my even even you know pastors do this thing oh i wish i had a building like that oh i wish i had this like that no i'll have what my daddy has for me and i am okay with it oh i wish my wife was like karina kapoor why do you pray like that you're not saif ali khan You don't have to copy anybody you don't have to covet anything you don't have to say oh i wish i could be like that i never said oh i wish i could sing like pastor mac i never said that i said god i'm going to sing the way you have made me cuz i know i am better than pastor mac so why would i even pray for that <laughs> be original turn to your neighbor and say be original now so david put them off and verse number 40 then he took his 
staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook wow this is my point number 6 his stones were his breakthrough amen his stones he didn't take the sword he said ah, i'm not used to it I, I i've never used it i've been a i've been a sheepy guy i'm not a fighting guy i just know how to take care of sheep so i don't know anything about sword i don't know anything about any weapon i don't know anything about any armor so let me go with the things that i know of i know a staff and i know some stones and and i know and i'm familiar with all these things but here is the point he took five stones from the brook brook was right there in the valley listen to me church you are searching for your breakthrough on the mountain top but your breakthrough is right there in the battlefield pastor where do i go where do i run should i change the city should i change this my house what do i do don't do anything your miracle is right next to you and we run here and there but he just looked into the brook and he and he took five stones out of it now i wondered why five was it less faith that one would miss so i'll put another one maybe out of five one will hit goliath no if you carefully read goliath had four more brothers he said if i get a chance i'll kill this lani and the other four as well he took five he said give me a chance goliath i'll i'll uproot you and your generation do you have a faith like that come on church do you have a faith like that so here is here is the point number 6 your miracle is not on the mountain top it is right there in the battlefield the area where you are struggling is the very area which carries your breakthrough it is the same area which carries the weapons of your breakthrough he took five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch wow his sling was in his hand and he approached the philistine his sling his sling his sling I wish everybody has a sling in spiritual realms a sling of prayer a sling of prophetic a, a sling of dedication to God a sling of loving Jesus a sling of sacrifice a sling of obedience a sling of inclination to God a sling of faith a sling of hope a sling of glory a sling of belief a sling of of who Jesus is a sling of of putting giants down a sling every body you are not made to just just put your hands down but you have been given a sling and he took his sling your bible is your sling your faith is your sling don't worry about swords lift up the sling lift up the sling he took the sling in his hands and he approached the philistine hallelujah I love this. He approached every step that Lighty was taking. Imagine with his sling, with his sling, and his brothers looking from top. What's going to happen to our brother now? Is he going to die? He's a young man. He's never been in a battlefield. He's not a trained soldier. He is not familiar with swords and fighting and battles. But you see that is what I'm trying to preach tonight. It is not about what you know. It is about who your God is. It is not about your experience. It is about who you are in him. It is not about your capabilities. It is about his presence walking with you. It is not about how much you have in you. It is about how much you have poured out on Jesus. It is about that. And David was a worshipper. He knew God. Look at the confidence. Can you approach your problems? Many times we just sit wait and watch what's going to happen right or wrong come on speak to me now so many times we are waiting pastor we are waiting god we are waiting 
don't wait approach i want to give you a statement if it's contradicting to the gospel don't receive it but if it is receive it the statement is because jesus is in you you can also decide on the time of your victory now you say no pastor only god knows the time but can i tell you something you and and him are one in the spirit and when you decide in faith don't you remember when mary said just just the wine is finished she said it's not my time it's not my time why do you disturb me mary knew the character of god oh when you know the character of god so mary didn't counsel jesus no jesus you are my son you have to do it for me please okay when he said it's not my time she looked at the disciples and said do whatever he says no counseling he will do it i know his character so in a way what i'm trying to preach is that when you you can decide your victory why i'm saying this because you are the one delaying it it is your less faith that is that is delaying it it is your action it is the it is that the vacuum in your life it is missing your elevation you can decide when we were coming to south africa i tell you very honestly from the bottom of my heart i've never said this but let me say it i've never said it in 6 months but let me say it tonight i was not ready to come in january because i thought i should invest two more years there and do a lot of stuff and take the churches to 25 and do this and do that and make it healthy and we'll take the church to these many numbers and all that and after two years i leave and and i was the one who was wanting to delay that means we have the power to delay but praise god i heard the lord he said no you have to go now and i thank god that i came at the time god showed me and here we are after six months Why I said this because if I would have not heard the voice of God I would have still been in India today. So that means we human beings know how to delay. And if you, all right I'll prove it to you. God told you that day pick up the phone say sorry to your sister you haven't done it till today you've been delaying it. God told you to do something that day but you haven't done it that means it proves you can delay. So if you can delay I tell you with the help of the Holy Spirit you can decide it and you can see it happening on that day what you decide Those who believed will see it Cuz I know my God is not that angry God he is my daddy God we can have conversations don't you remember in Matthew chapter 15 that woman came and said please heal my daughter Jesus said I can't I'm not for you I'm only for the lost sheep of Israel Jesus was denying it but her faith brought her timing to that day My God And that's where your your faith needs to grow up He approached the Philistine Hallelujah last but not the least now goliath stops and he said whatever he wanted to say now came david's chance in verse 45 then david said to the philistine you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin but i come to you in the name of the lord of hosts the god of the armies of israel whom you have defied this day the lord will deliver you into my hand and i will strike you down and cut your head and i will give the dead bodies of the host of the philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beast of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a god of miracles there is a god in israel that all this assembly may know that the lord saves not with sword and spear for the battle is the lord's and he will give you into my hands my hands what is my point number 7 say it before you see it if you want to have a strong courageous sound mind check your speech a sound mind your tongue is the window of your mind So when you say something it tells the world what you carry inside. 
and before he saw it he conceived it and he said it today you will be in my hands i want to ask you one question church one question i want to ask you if david would have not said those lines was there a problem he would have still killed goliath right why did he say it to teach us you say it to see it what we do we say what we see we do, we shouldn't be saying what we seeing we should be seeing what we are saying I know my redeemer lives. I know my provider lives. I know. I know. That story just amazes me. When Abraham took Isaac to the mountain to sacrifice. He told his disciples, not disciples his servants, stay here as I go on the mountain to sacrifice my son. Yes or no? How many people said yes? Meet me after the church service. He never said that. He never said to the disciples that I'm going up to the mountain to sacrifice my son. He said I'm going up the mountain to worship the Lord. Wow. Why uh, 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 said, Abraham, wait, wait, wait. He's your only son. You got up to so many prayers, so many men of God prayed for you, went to so many crusades. Then your wife got blessed. And now God is asking you to sacrifice his son. Now you are going you are telling servants, I am going up with my son to worship the Lord. Yes, I know my God. He has given me this promise. I and if you read carefully, he said, we will return back to you. We will return back to you. We will that's only a sound mind. And I tell you church, listen to me as as abraham was taking a step like david on the mountain with every step going up with isaac i tell you from the other side the lamb was taking a step up to the mountain you stop he will stop you take 10 steps and stop say i think i've seen enough of god i've prayed enough i'm a little discouraged the lamb will stop after 10 minutes on the other side It is always in the end. That's why the book of Revelation says, "The one who will have patience till the last will get the crown of glory." It's not about doing few steps faithfully. It's about living the whole life with full dedication and faithfulness and faith with God. And every step Abraham was taking, Lamb was taking. When they reached up, he made the altar. The Lamb was found right there in the bush. I tell you your mind is your biggest weapon your mind is your biggest weapon your mind is your ho- so what's point number 7 what's point number 7 what's point number 7 the point number 7 is speak it before you see it but tonight is a night of miracles because we have a god of miracles and then you know the story he took one stone he put it in the sling and he just and he just just used his sling and he attacked goliath with that stone and it hit him right in the center of his head and that giant fell down on the ground the bible clearly says david jumped towards him he ran towards him he took who sword saul no Goliath I left the sword there listen to my last this is the eighth one buy seven one free he left Saul's sword and he oh my god this is fresh i never thought of it he left what was Saul's and he believed in who he was god promoted him and taught him how to take the enemy's sword and kill the enemy with its sword On the way you will learn things on the way you will be promoted on the way you will know new things on the way you will grow